Hello, my friends, and welcome to Fish Tree. I'm Alexander Williamson, and today we're talking about how to tell when your soil or substrate is spent, when it's time to replace it, add more, or start over. And really, there are two major categories of why you would want to do this or why you'd have to do this. The first is aesthetics. Uh, really, your aquarium is art piece. It is a creation and a little ecosystem in your house, right? So perhaps you don't like how it looks when the little pellets that you bought that were all one nice uniform color and size, when they break down into a dusty mess. That could be. Maybe you are trying to grow beautiful plants that are rich in color and that are their brightest reds and crimsons and all those colors that you see on aquascape photos and things. And you're getting maybe a color like this here where it's kind of peach and pink, but it's not quite as bright as full intensity uh, aquascaping. And so over time, your aqua soils, as you can see here, they move from this spherical shape down into a shape that is dusty and smaller and smaller granules. Now, that can cause the tank to also be much more prone to dust-ups like this. Just being disturbed, pulling out a plant, moving something around, it can look murky. And that can also put ammonia or nitrates, nitrites back up into the water column. And maybe you don't want that. Maybe you move things around a lot. You're always trimming your tank or you're selling plants out of your tank. And that's the reason why you want to put new substrate in. Now, I have a video called How to Replace a Substrate of an Active or Cycled Already Existing Aquarium. Check that video out if you want to know how to actually do it, the process of doing so without releasing a whole bunch of ammonia or nitrates into the water column. Uh, but the other reason that we're talking about today is really about the functionality of your substrates. So a lot of people are keeping plants and aquariums in deep substrate. So they are keeping their plants and animals in a system, an ecosystem that is all connected and dependent on one another. And the way we take care of that really depends on our aqua soil and our substrate. So let's talk about Apart from just knowing it's time because your plants no longer look as bright and colorful, you're not getting the visual effects you want from your plants, let's talk about the actual science of when you have an ecosystem with a deep substrate or with anoxic and oxygen-rich environments. Because these pellets hide a very fascinating little secret, and that is that at the center of these pellets, let's get some help from the graphics here, at the center of these pellets, they were designed very intelligently, and the center of them stores ammonia. Now, you may wonder, where does that ammonia come from? Do you buy it with it in the pellets? And the answer is, usually not. There are a few, like ADA Amazonia, that have a center that does have either nitrates, nitrites, or a trace amount of ammonia, and that is in a clay-dense volcanic clay or ash center. And then the outside is a more uh, organic soil that still has either a bioactive uh, component of, uh, you know, spores of fungi and little traces of archaea and bacteria that are all pivotal into taking nutrients from substrate and feeding it to your plants. But what's going on also is that all around these little spheres, you want the plants to look good and they need to feed at the leaves and up top, but that's not where plants mainly feed. They mainly feed in the roots, and you can literally feed them just by sticking the roots in the tank. So just like I'm doing up here, these plants are all growing with their roots submerged, but the rest of the plant up and out of the aquarium. And you can do that just fine because the roots are where more than 90% of nutrients are usually sucked up in a plant. And so that's why substrate is really important to the plants themselves, which also uh, help us get rid of waste and which help us, you know, put oxygen into our tanks and look nice. Plus, you can sell them and trade them and all of that. Plants are great. So let's look again a little more scientifically into why those pellets were designed. And also, if you want to take a really deep dive into this, I have a video called What is the Best Substrate? And it's about aqua soil pellets. So in this video, we're talking about if you use dirt, if you used aqua soil, or if you used a sub sort of substrate that's nutrient rich like uh, an aqua soil mixed with 
uh, you know, gravel or something else, and you put a sand cap on it and it's deep substrate, you're in the right place. We're going to talk about that in a moment after we finish up the science stuff. All right, so when all that's going on in your aquarium, the actual spheres that make up your aqua soil, if we look again at a little graphic, you can see that all of the nutrients that you're adding to your tank, you can add as liquid fertilizers, you can add it as powders that dissolve, and you could do estimated index where you're adding all new fertilizer, fer fertilizers every week and changing things out. And in that case, you're basically deciding what nutrients the plants you have need, what pH and what TDS your water is, KH and GH, and you're adding all those things into a mix of water and then into the aquarium, and then maybe once a week, you do a 50 or 80% water change and then start over again so that that amount is consistently at its max at the best amount possible and the plants are looking their best. Well, when you're doing this or if you're just simply adding, you know, a liquid fertilizer to your aquarium, all of that over time is working its way down to the plant roots. So it's not just the the uh, water that is feeding your plants. It's actually your plant roots that are eating a lot of it. And over time, you can see those pellets break down. Those pellets break down and they turn into a silt or mulm layer. And it's very dusty and fine. And below that, there is a rusty layer. And this rust layer is usually iron or sulfur if you had it in your substrate or if you were using quality aqua soils. And it is the layer that shows you anything below it, anything below this layer, there's not enough oxygen in there for it to oxidize the iron in it. So the bacteria that's working in there can't do its thing and it's stuck. But you can actually see the remnants of where plants were and where they pushed this down. So same with here where there's a void. That could just be a snail or something that went through it and burrowed down in there. But it's pretty neat to be able to see. And actually, the other thing we can see real quickly is all of the fungi and bacteria that are in here. Now, I'm using a UV light, and you can actually see some of the cyanobacteria in there that lives underneath the layer that has oxygen. It glows a bright purple when the light is on it, like a fuchsia or magenta. Isn't that cool? There's really a patch of it right here. And that is taking certain nutrients and turning them into food for itself. And that's what causes little gas bubbles to come out of your substrate is bacteria, fungi, and archaea, as well as little microbes and microorganisms processing nutrients. Now, if we look at another tank that's not as old as these other ones that are approaching seven years, where I haven't replenished the nutrients by feeding the tank and therefore allowing the plants to eat from whatever the fish are eating, you'll see here the substrate is a little more diffused. There isn't as clear of a rust line, and also that's because I didn't use as rich of nutrients. But the the carpeting layer here has gotten so dense because those pellets are no longer all round and even. Now they're a mulm layer that started fluffy and light, but the shrimp and the snails and the bacteria here have done such a good job in breaking down all this stuff that now it's too dense of a layer for the plants to receive oxygen or for their roots to get the fertilizer and the nutrients that were circulating in the water. So the whole design of these little spheres or pellets is now compromised. So let's talk about the brilliant design of these pellets and also how it mimics anoxic and deep substrate filtration that's going on in a tank. So where we saw that rust line or here, you can actually just see another line of sediment that's about where it's happening. It's going on in all these tanks I'm showing you that are nice and seasoned. They're not just cycled, but they're old enough that they're seasoned. And they have a layer down low here where you actually start acquiring nutrients because of all those little microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and things. And you can see the roots are actually coming down into that layer. There's one layer of roots that tries to spread out and feed up in the water column using easy to access nutrients. But there's another layer of roots that spreads out and starts crushing those round little spheres and trying to access them. So let's talk about the science of why it's accessing them and how you can tell when they're fully spent, when they've been crushed and they're no longer helpful to your substrate or your aquarium anymore. 
All right, so back to the aqua soil and you know pretty aquascape type style tanks. Now here you'd be running CO2 or oxygen, and over time those spheres they break down. So if we look at a graphic here you can see that the oxygen is swirling around those spheres, even down in the substrate. But a magical thing is going on, and just like in our filters that are on the back of our aquariums, there's actually aerobic, which means oxygen-rich, filtration going on. So these are actually helping filter the water. And just like you've got a cycled aquarium when your uh, filter media is cycled, your substrate is doing the same thing. Now, something even more magical, in my opinion, can go on, and that is why we talk about doing things like planted tanks that have deep substrate and caps. So let's use a visual aid, and let me show you something that's incredible. So if we're looking at the soil, there's a certain level of it that is oxygen-rich. And over time, all the little shrimp, bacteria, fungi, all that stuff breaks down the fluffy layers of soil, as well as food that you're feeding your aquarium, that's being turned into first fish waste, then your shrimp and your snails are turning that into a even more broken down form of essentially soil or hummus, and that is basically nutrients. It's been stripped of the harmful stuff and it's nutrients because of bacteria and other things helping break it down. Now that's going on in the oxygen area and that's all great, right? Well, we talked about how plants feed 90% at the roots, so we wanna be feeding them rich nutrients at the roots. And when oxygen can flow, then any liquid fertilizer you put in can be absorbed at the leaves and at the roots, which is great. The CO2 can also be absorbed and carbon is a building block of any living thing. But when your substrate gets a cap on it, you place a cap on the soil so that oxygen doesn't reach down into it, and over time your mulm gets thick enough, you can actually end up with a whole layer that functions like each of the aqua soil pellets. So the top of your uh, aqua soil is actually like mulm and detritus and leaves and things breaking down and it may look, not look the most sightly and this may be why you want to replace your aqua soil. No shame in that if you just want a really clean clear looking aquarium then that's understandable but if you are wanting to take on another few years of growth in this tank what happens below the layer of where you saw the rust line here is the oxygen has run out, and you can see how packed the roots are up here. They're squiggling and squaggling, doing all their feeding up in the layers that are fluffier, because that's where it's easiest to access, access the nutrients. But right at the line where they're at, one, they can partner with bacteria and feed below that, trading sugars and carbohydrates for nutrients that they're lacking that the fungi or bacteria can access, and that's called mycorrhizal relationships. But two, they're also anchoring themselves. And so the big reason why you might change your substrate out, the bigger reason than aesthetics and it looking murky or unorganized, is because the nutrients have run out and you're tired of adding root tabs. You don't want to feed your fish uh, a whole bunch of nutrients so that when they go to the bathroom, they produce a well-rounded nutrient profile. And you've got a fish, perhaps, that's digging or you're moving plants and you're releasing that deep level. So let's look one more time at a graphic at what's going on at the deepest level underneath uh, the, the oxygen-rich level. Underneath the rust band, you actually have an oxygen-free or extremely low oxygen zone. And that is where the bacteria is working in the exact opposite way that it does in an oxygen-rich zone. You've got different types of bacteria that, with the help of a little bit of iron, a little bit of sulfur, they actually take ammonia and they store it away by, they make ammonia their waste. So rather than eating the ammonia and turning it into nitrites and nitrates as their waste with two different sets of bacteria like you've learned the aquarium cycle is, this level and the center of aqua soil pellets is bacteria right on the edge there is taking the nitrates out of the water turning it into nitrites then into ammonia and storing it away and it's doing that because it's eating that extra energy and so it takes away from different uh, compounds and chemicals that are there it takes away some part reconfigures it and when it goes to the bathroom it releases a little bit of uh you know uh, sulfur based gases um, as well as, uh, so hydrogen sulfide is the main one, and methane, CO, and CO2. But the other funny thing that it releases is nitrous oxide, NO2. So it is taking those 
uh, various elements, rearranging them, and it's getting its energy, those bacteria down below the rust layer are getting their energy from the ammonia and the nitrites and nitrates, but in the reverse order. So they're taking it and they're storing it away. And over time, that can build up very, very rich to the point where your bacteria that breaks down ammonia on the outside is no longer doing that. And so once the spheres have broken down and they're no longer their shape and oxygen's not reaching it, your anaerobic layer or your oxygen pore layer can get higher and higher up in the aquarium. So that rust band can get higher and higher and higher and you'll either need to add soil or uh, fluff it up somehow, adding plant roots which will oxygenate it, but it becomes so rich that when you rupture this layer, it actually leaks ammonia. Now the good thing about it storing ammonia like this is that plants would prefer to feed on low intensity pockets of ammonia at their roots more than they would prefer to feed on nitrates or nitrites. So it's all a perfect little circle and balance, but you've got to have that exchange of the oxygenated layer and unoxygenated layer touching and exchanging the ammonia back and forth, the nitrogen compounds back and forth, so they can one eat it and then the other processes it and they both use opposite parts. So over time, that can become so rich that you've just got a super rich and ammonia strong layer at the bottom, no spheres, no oxygenation in your soil and it actually becomes eutrophied. I hope that this gives you some ideas and some actual science behind what's going on in your aquarium and why your soil may have run out of energy or be exhausted, no longer helping your plants look good, but it's also maybe not helping your ecosystem anymore because there's only so much we can do by adding nutrients, adding to the food, so forth and so on, adding root tabs and liquid ferts. Eventually, it either gets too strong or too weak usually, and it's time to kind of reset just for ease so you don't have to you know, have a constant struggle on your hands. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you enjoyed the channel as a whole. If you do, clicking that thumbs up is really helpful. Also subscribing, liking, all of that is amazing and I appreciate it oh so much. And I will see you guys next time on Fishery.